Hey guys! Today I wanted to talk to you about the fact that your dog does not need more stimulation. And by that I mean your dog doesn't need more excitement, more rewards, etc. And I'm talking about this because I posted on Instagram today about leash reactivity and what it is. Leash reactivity doesn't have to be aggression or your dog being mean. Leash reactivity can be aggression, but it could also be intense excitement. It could also be fear. And leash reactivity is any of those feelings that are brought about when a dog is on leash. And it can be when they see other dogs. It can be if they see other people, runners, bicyclists, skateboarders, strollers. But any way you go, the dog starts acting kind of crazy, pulling, lunging, barking, and just tunes you out. Uh, some common advice people are given when their dog has leash reactivity issues is to simply have something better. These things can be treat payloads, toys, you doing something goofy, petting them, engaging them. So anything that theoretically they might care about more than the dog, person, skateboarder, etc. And I have to give this advice a big fat nope. If you follow that advice, one of the biggest things you're going to be doing is reinforcing that dog's bad behavior. Because what's happening is the dog's doing that behavior and then it's getting something awesome, therefore they're doing something great. Or if you follow that you're supposed to ignore them and then give them the treat once they calm down and focus back in on you, what they're then learning is they can do this bad behavior, then they're going to wait a little bit, and then they're going to get something awesome, therefore they're doing something awesome and they just have to be a little patient for their treat. This also isn't the best idea because it amps the dog up even more. So the dog's state of mind is already elevated. They're already aroused or distressed or uncomfortable. And then you're giving them something that's kind of messing with their emotions even more. So the way I like to think about it is if you bring a toddler to a theme park, like they're super jacked, they're really excited. So now do that with your excited toddler and tell them they can have anything in the theme park they want. Any candy, any toys, play any games, like they're gonna lose it. I really would not like to be the babysitter in that situation. But it's the same thing with dogs. When you have a dog who's already elevated, adding in toys, goofy gestures, petting them, treats is gonna bring that up even more. And one of the biggest reasons of all not to do this, what happens when you don't have the goods? What happens when you don't have treats to give your dog and they're freaking out? What happens if you don't have their favorite toy? What happens if they simply don't care about your goofy behavior enough? You're pretty much SOL. So the real solution for this situation would be to get your dog prong collar trained. Start prong collar training them and teach them how to properly heal. This is the dog's meditation to the theme park analogy. This will get them in a more zen state of mind, more focused on you and at the task at hand. Once they learn heal, if they're still dealing with leash reactivity, you can give a firm leash correction or you can use a bonker. And if you don't know what a bonker is, you can Google Gary Wilkes bonker. It's a rolled up towel. You throw it down at the dog. It doesn't hurt them. It's a towel. But the big takeaway is that you can't stop a behavior with treats. Treats are great at reinforcing any behaviors you want. I use them all the time when I'm teaching dogs. But you can't stop a bad behavior with treats or by ignoring them. And I'll talk a little bit more about ignoring bad behaviors tomorrow. Also, don't forget to check out my YouTube for older archived videos and my Instagram for more daily content. I'll talk to you later, guys.